Hi there. See, I didn't say hi, everybody. Oh. Okay. So this is Tim and Jen. <laughs> Welcome to our knitting podcast. Well, knitting and farm update podcast. Sheep stuff. Sheep stuff, farm stuff, and <laughs> knitting stuff. Lots of knitting. Yeah. And fruitcake stuff. Fruitcake? Oh, we're getting ready for the holidays. We've got <laughs> balls, knitted balls happening. We've got fruitcakes happening. All kinds of stuff. I think we're a little bit late with the fruitcake, but yeah, okay. Rachel well, and I are. I'm sure it'll be delicious. focused anyway. We're carrying on. So today we're going to talk about our projects as usual. We have a kind of a big farm update because today was a, a little bit more exciting than we had intended on the farm, mm-hmm. and we have a shop update, uh, which is going to be kind of different than what we usually we spend a lot of time talking. But we've got so much stuff to show. We're going to kind of give you the Coles Notes version, and then um, you'll have to go on our website and see what's right. going on from there. So, um, so that's it. It's November 29th. I think so. That they're watching I don't it. know. What's don't today? Know. Today's the 26th. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the 28th. I guess the 27th, and I guess wrong. Oh, okay. Wasn't Mom's birthday yesterday? Yeah. It's the so 25th. So today would be the 25th then. Yeah. Is that what so it is? So they'll be watching it on the 27th, not oh, the 28th. Okay. Oh, 27th. you read that wrong. I read it wrong because I don't have what? my glasses on. <laughs> okay, it's the 27th. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. November 27th. So, the farm update. It's always amazing to me when this happens, but if you go back to one of our really early episodes, I guess we'll put it down below, we interviewed our vet. Our second one. The second episode? Yeah. Weren't we? Cheeky. I know. (laughs) Doing an interview on it. I was going to say third, but anyway. Okay, so our second episode, and um, her her name is Kim. Well, second or third, but I think Amanda was the third. Oh, okay. I know we were cheeky. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you want to, after you hear the story, if you want to see who we're talking about, she's in that episode. We interviewed, uh, our, our vet. And frankly, it's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, um, so today we had to do a little minor procedure on a ram. Lamb. Lamb. Yeah. On a lamb. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, so we, we had marked him a couple days ago because we knew he was going to, going to have his little procedure and uh, this morning we put him in the small barn what we call the small barn it has smaller pens and it's a it's good makes a good little hospital or if you need to yeah if you need to separate it's it's the old what we call the old barn and it has like nice I don't know why it's it's a lot lower, so it seems more cozy in there than. It's got ambiance. Yeah, it's got ambiance. Burn. Yes, <laughs> and uh, it has small pens, and it's easy to contain them and everything. So, um, sheep don't like to be by themselves, so you always have to have a friend to go with the uh-huh. with them. So he had a little nurse lamb to help help him get through the minor procedure. And uh, so Kim showed up. We also have a volunteer that helps us in the morning. Heather. You well, we know her. everybody knows yeah. Heather. Don't drop the bucket. Right. But that Heather. <laughs> she's having all the fun. Yeah. She's uh, applied to uh, vet college. So she's waiting to, to find out if she's going, going to be admitted into the um, veterinarian college here. So she was, when she found out there was going to be burn surgery, she was all over it. <laughs> she was coming for sure. And Kim has another helper that's working with her. So we had lots of, lots of uh, support. Five, five of us. Yeah. Yeah. All some standing observers. around watching. <laughs> some yeah. Some are observers and some actually doing action. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know how many details do we want to give? Well, I don't know, but we were holding the lamb. Yeah. And he needed a little bit of a general, uh, like a, not an anesthetic, but like a tranquilizer. Yeah. It's like a tranquilizer. Yeah. So the problem is, is that with sheep, they can be a little bit iffy and the dosages of the tranquilizer are not always that clear cut. The different sheep react differently to it. It's not really consistent the way that they react to the, to the tranquilizer. So you need to give them enough that they're kind of tranquilized but not too much so that they go to sleep and don't wake up. Right. So there's an antidote to the tranquilizer. So what uh, what happened was we gave him the tranquilizer and we waited. You have to wait. It takes a few minutes for it to start working. And uh, it work, started working. So the minute that the Kim was sure that it was Dr. Kim was sure that it was working, 
she gave him the antidote because the procedure was only going to take 10 minutes. So she didn't want to leave him under for too long. So that all went fine. According to schedule, the, the tranquilizer was administered. Jennifer was holding him. And um, Kim had the antidote. I had given it to him. And had just given it to him. And then kind of went sideways. He flopped over. Yeah, he flopped over. <laughs> like he passed out without breathing. So yeah. it was a little bit uh, not expected at all because yeah. he was already, he already had the antidote. Yeah. So it was a little bit scary. So we were all chatting and I was like, is he uh, breathing? Yeah. <laughs> Still? Seems like maybe he's not breathing. Yeah. And his, his head was flopped over. So everybody was kind of in shock. Yeah. Because it was really something simple to be done. Yeah. And um, so Kim... Dr. Kim put her hand on his chest and his heart was still beating. And then I don't know if she pumped him like a couple <laughs> yeah. times. I was waiting for Jennifer to start with the mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> and then he took a breath and then he was okay. Yeah. We were all, we weren't okay, but yeah. he was okay. I literally, my heart was here in my throat <laughs> and Kim was, Dr. Kim was cool and yeah. calm and collected. And uh, we only found out later that her heart was also... <laughs> yeah, she was a little bit nervous. Yeah. What she said was after everything was done and okay, she said, well, she said, we didn't really need that little unexpected <laughs> adrenaline rush, did we? So and everybody was just kind of... And Heather was... Her eyes got to... Like, like this. Anyway, he's fine. He's up eating around. now. Yeah, he's eating and he's with his little friend. We have a picture of the two oh, okay. of them. Okay. How you feeling? How you feeling? Get some, yeah, breakfast was light yesterday. Oh boy. Yums. Yeah, he had a rough day. <laughs> so cute. Little his nurse. His little nurse friend. Yeah. And uh, they're having their, they had a late lunch, early supper. <laughs> so they're, they're, okay, you can't give them food right away either because the tranquilizer does affect their swallow reflex. Right. So we had to let them chill out for a little the while. The poor nurse it. missed her breakfast too, though. That yeah. wasn't really fair. She's like, how'd yeah. I get involved? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But when she's you're was, easy to catch, that's yeah. How. When uh, because she's a bottle lamb, so right. she's easy to catch. So she got volunteered, <laughs> voluntold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's fine, <coughs> and um, it's really cute because the the little ewe lamb was kind of look look went looking right in his eyes. Yeah. Like, you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so a little more excitement than what we right. Oh, it's good though. I just figured because I've resuscitated lots of lambs. Well, we've resuscitated lots of lambs. Yeah. When they're first born, yeah. not normally at that age. Yeah. But like, I just figured, well, he hasn't been dead long enough yet. She'll figure out something. You might have seen the light. <laughs> you may have seen the light, but he decided to not go to the light. Right. I, I just figured whatever had happened, it just happened. So yeah. She can probably no brain damage. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> And we're not as we as we all know because no. we've talked about it before. We're not above actually putting our lips. No, on I it. absolutely would have right on that. Yeah. So yeah. he wasn't gonna you know lose we're oxygen. Get to his brain or yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> so he was recovered well enough that he was hard to catch when we had to give him his general painkiller <laughs> yeah. afterwards. So but he that took off. Tucker, he took off. Yeah. Yeah. So that he wasn't walking in a straight line or anything. <laughs> I don't think, think he passed any sobriety test. No. But, He's okay. He's good now. He's a cute little one too. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so yeah, so that was more excitement than what we, we anticipated. So we've been reading all your comments and we, um, we always hear that people like to see like the videos in the, on the farm and stuff. So we have something a little bit different. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Yeah. I just want to make one more comment about that because I don't know if it's just me. You can answer. Is it about my drooling? No, no, you're not. <laughs> not Phrases drooling. make you feel like you're drooling all the oh, time. Okay. It's Great. another Sounds wonderful lovely. side effect. Yeah. Um, the I I'm I was ab- absolutely in shock that you actually perform surgery on farm animals in the barn. 
Of course it makes sense because you can't haul animals all over the place like all the a time. cow or something yeah yeah you have to do it in the barn and um you know being somebody who grew up in a family that had people in the medical profession you kind of i find it a bit shocking that that's but you it, must it have always out. known that horses are gelded in the barn i don't know that i did i didn't know because we when i had to give shots when ourselves I, yeah but when I took riding lessons when I was a kid, like they would come out and there was like a day when they went around and did oh. them or yeah. Oh, okay. In the barn. Yeah. Yeah. So it speaks to the resilience of animals because I mean, now he's out there with his surgical little procedure with no band aid or anything. Mm-hmm. And he's in the straw and whatever and he's gonna oh, be God. and yeah, he's gonna be fine. There'd be no point wrapping it. No, that's for sure. And he's gonna be yeah. fine. But I, I was thinking about this, like if you were, you know, on a, in a shipwreck or on a deserted island, I think you, what you really want is a vet. Yeah, and some <laughs> chlorhexidine rubbing alcohol <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. right, so, <laughs> yeah. Because they, it's amazing. Like they do. It's all like these, a field hospital. Yeah, I guess exactly. Yeah, yeah, and they do. I mean, big animals. A field hospital is, I hope, a little bit cleaner than our sheep burn, but yeah. maybe not. <laughs> and <laughs> usually things work out. Truth. Yeah. Like I mean, usually. yeah, you could. Uh, well, he he's not on anti antibiotics no. or anything. No. no. But you could do that as well if yeah. you if you were. Yeah. Like so fish. it's. Uh, I'm thinking. You know, if I have to vote, what do you want with you on the deserted island? It's going to be a vet. Yeah, because they're scrap like they're scrap in, field. Yeah, they're in the field. Like yes. they're uh, it's like happens. having an ER doctor as opposed to a GP. I, I guess. Yeah. But they're also used to work, working in yeah. bad conditions. Like it yeah. was minus three Celsius this right. morning. Um, you know, we were there with our toques on and oh, I was cold. Blowing, by the time we went blowing in, blowing into yeah. our hands and stuff like that, and she performed her. She was warm after yeah. we stopped breathing. <laughs> yes, I think, <laughs> she I think was uh, warm enough. when I was putting my makeup on before we came to, re- I still had two red <laughs> spots like this on my cheeks. So yeah. it was a poor anyway. little guy. Yeah, all right. Poor well, he's, all of us. he's fine now. Yeah, he's good. I Sorry, mean, I can still see his chin twitching. So oh, okay. yeah. But it was, he definitely had stopped breathing. The yeah. lungs were not taken on air. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, which, you know. Anyway, we won't. Anyway, it's a happy ending. Yeah, definitely. That's why we need happy endings. Okay, so what we're going to show is another part of our chores that we do every morning. Right. And it's the feeding the bunnies. Right. We have eight bunnies. Yeah, in that hatch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nine, including Paige. Yes. Yeah, so the Paige exiled, has her own apartment. The exiled Yeah, writer. she has her own apartment. It, she's now in with the patient and the nurse, actually, because oh. that's where they are. Her, her, She's got a big, like a really big hutch. rabbit hutch yeah. off the ground and everything, so it's safe um, for her to be there. But she's by herself. And she really doesn't mind, I don't think. She loves it. Mm-hmm. She has her little a little house with a little door, yeah. and she's in there in her straw and yeah. stuff like that. She sat on her throne and watched the whole procedure today. Yeah. Yeah, she was actually, she has a litter box in her hutch, so that's yeah. how big it is. Yeah. And she was actually literally on the throne. Yeah. Watching. <laughs> and she's like, this is a lot of excitement for in here. And she was eating her, eating her little uh, alf- alfalfa tidbits like it was right. popcorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, she's like, what's going on there now? Yeah. <laughs> this is new. <laughs> anyway, you're going to see the other rabbit. Okay, bunnies. Eating. Okay. Here we go. So, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty easy job. Yeah. They, I mean, they keep it clean. Like, they have two litter boxes. Yeah. And they uh, use, they, the litter boxes they for use the most them part. ish. Yes. But uh, I'll tell you half, something. Half and half. They uh, will kick the litter out of it when it's dirty. Yeah. So I always know. And yeah. if you think you're, I look at it sometimes like, it's not that dirty. I shuffle it around, I put it back, the whole thing will be dumped the following morning. <laughs> like,. <laughs> They ne- like it's totally true. Once they yeah. make up their mind, they'll kick yeah. a bunch of litter out. And I, if you try to like 
this is fool them. Yeah, put it. No, the whole thing will be dumped. Yeah. So they really let you know when they want their litter box. Right. They like, changed or litter need, boxes. Yeah. If they're not complaining, you don't need to worry about That's it. That's right. They yeah. tell me when they when those yeah. need to be emptied. So. And you'll know you notice that we have different levels, so they've got lots of room to hop around. And there's straw on the on the bottom that you saw. You can probably see, but underneath that is like um, what is it? Centimeter by centimeter. Uh, one centimeter by one centimeter yeah, web, it's like rabbit wire, rabbit wire. Yeah. So that nothing can get in. Right. So the whole they thing can't dig underneath. Like they're yeah. fully encased in wire mesh. It's chicken wire around the top, and then yeah. a, a mesh. Under. I think it's like a rabbit wire. because yeah. It's not chicken wire because that would be sharp on their feet. It's yeah. Something more solid, and then that's covered in straw yeah. so that no no predators can get in. Right. And they um that and the straw is in a thick layer over that, so yeah. their little feet are not on the mesh because that sometimes uh sometimes that can happen um in some ways that some cages are built and stuff, mm-hmm. but in this case it's like a thick layer of straw and mm-hmm. then uh which is. Technically, the little poops can go down through the mesh, but they use their litter box pretty yeah, well. Yeah, and then Jennifer was brushing off that platform where we, th- we yeah. threw the hay. They sometimes poop there, but... That's for the errant turds that have yeah. escaped on their way to the bathroom or whatever. It's like a few every every day, but like that's definitely not where they're pooping because yeah. rabbits poop a lot. Yes. Just say Nuggets everywhere. It's a volume, like a large volume. Yeah. Yeah, that they produce. You'd be yeah. shocked by yes. the size of them. <laughs> Versus the size of the rabbit, you mean. Not yeah. the size of the... No, no, not the size of the pellets, but, like, the number that they produce yeah. in the course of a day is, yes. like, quite If only something. they were really glossettes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be making a mint, selling them in little bags over the end of the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so that's the... Uh, and all of that stuff that you see hanging there, it's, um, it's actually rabbit fur. Yeah. Like, it's all... There's a few cobwebs, but there's not... It's not really cobwebs. It's all that rabbit fur. So, we have to... everything. You have to... It's so fine, and it just floats uh, floats up because, you know, it's all... It's everywhere in there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, every now and then, we have to take a big brush and and uh, take it out because it's, uh, it's, it's, their, it's their fur. Right. All right. All right. So, that so, was the bunny feeding. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we should talk about some knitting. Yeah. Okay. Whips and rips. Yeah. No rips. Mm, not oh. really. No. Okay. So I'll go first. <laughs> oh, then you're willing to admit Okay. Too. So now I said I would have this section done and I do have it done. Mm-hmm. This is my flat rock. I now have two 14 and a half long inches of, or pieces of this, uh, body. Two Tuck place mats. Two place mats. <laughs> so, I mean, I started this last March. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think now you've beat the record for Joe Bats Arm. No, no, it doesn't really count because I gave up <laughs> when uh, I, I, did, I didn't knit. I didn't work on it from March until a month ago. Right. So okay. I, I didn't. I wasn't even trying. So I'm really, really happy to have this part done. And there are a couple little teeny tiny, probably mistakes that no one would ever see that I. How would you see a mistake? Yeah, it? it's unless it was. But it's really... a really cool. Yeah. Thing and it takes a really long time, <laughs> and you don't have glasses on, so I have no idea what size these are, but they're little. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of like three rows to every row because it's a it's a brioche style stitch, and there's one stitch and two yarn overs that mm-hmm. that, that you then brioche knit together or brioche purl together. So, I mean, that's why it takes so long. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing it in our lace weight yarn, Alden Lace. We do sell kits for the colors that you need um, to make this if you're interested in giving it a go. So what comes next is it's got side button mm-hmm. bands, which is really cute. So I'll be putting the button, the four button bands. Is that the um, next step right now? That's the next step. And then what about all these, uh, these fringes? Yes. Do they just go so inside? I'm crazy, right? So I have cut them all pretty short. Okay. You look nervous already. Well, I don't know what you're going to say. So you slice them all. I mean, I didn't do this one because this is the first piece I did. This is going to be the front. Um, So you pick up stitches? I'm going to be picking up along here, 97 stitches. Okay. So then these fringes would go to the inside? Yeah. Like it's going to be a little bit of a dog's breakfast trying to get that picked up really nicely. Um, And I was going to sew a little seam along here. Okay. To hold everything? I don't know if I need to. No, it's not loosening at all. At all. No, like you can go along and sort of tighten them. Yeah. And they'll probably felt up a bit, and they're going to be turned to the inside. Yeah. And I think I'm just going to shag well, you it. You can see how... 
<laughs> Shag that land. <laughs> That's a new word we learned from the saltwater mittens, gals. Oh, we need to talk about that. Oh, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So I think I'm just going <laughs> to... Yeah. Well, gonna... I mean, it'll probably stay. It doesn't look like it's moving at all. No. Uh-huh. So why create more work? Okay. So that's flat rack. So I got to do the button bands and then I think it's the sleeves. And then of course there's a color work, uh, thing and I'm changing the a colors color up a thing. bit. That's the technical term. <laughs> band. I'm going to leave the gold off it. I'm going to do it mostly in the purple and plum colors. Mm-hmm. Um, just to make so it a little nice. less goldy. I don't really want the sweater to have a gold cast cast at all, even though there is gold tiny bit running yeah, through here. But, sense. uh, Yeah. So, and then from there, I don't know, the sleeves are lace and the top okay. is lace. Excellent. So I have a color work band and then a bunch of lace knitting, like, Excellent. that I hope I don't lose my mind over. You won't. So to even take this somewhere, there's eight colors of yarn in here that you're mm. alternating. You need a suitcase. <laughs> so I'm happy <laughs> to be done color. with all that. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is probably a good time to mention the fact that on our forum, somebody asked a question about what we would suggest is the best first Jennifer Beale pattern to do yeah so which which uh which pattern so I actually wrote to Jennifer yes and said Jennifer what would you suggest and I agree with Jennifer you do yeah so step aside was the first one yeah so that's the one that large color work motif yeah that's in our what weight is that is that Aaron Aaron yeah Aaron it works up pretty quick I think right it's quick it's fun the motif is like super easy to memorize as you're going along the road you still have some kind of funky construction there's construction (laughs) but you learn funkiness you, yeah. If you're not, if you, um, so my answer that I gave to the person was, it depends on what kind of skills you want to u- learn because you're always going to learn a skill. Yeah. All of them are interesting because of the construction. Mm-hmm. So that, that's a given. But an air and weight is obviously easier to see what you're doing and yeah. rip out and redo. And you know, that one, it's sort of knit in a bit of a circle like this yeah. and knit in a circle like this and then kind of all joined up, but it's not, um, I found it. Pretty straightforward and very fun. Yes, yes. Yeah. So she she said that. And then the second one, which I was surprised at, was the Lance de Loup. Okay. So that is the one that Andrea just finished on Fruity Knitting, knitting a couple episodes ago. And I and she and Kim or sorry Jennifer Beale actually wrote seriously. In the, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I'm, 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 was probably she was probably expecting me to write back and say, "Are you crazy?" Mm. But um, it is a lot of stock and net. You're gonna learn how to steak for sure. I think Andrea even said, "I'm quoting, it's a it's a study in steaking because right. there's there's steaks everywhere, but there's a lot of stock and net." Mm-hmm. And the suggestion that I would say is that. Um, pick, pick a pattern. Her, her instruct, Jennifer's instructions are so well written that you can really trust what you're reading. You just have to make sure you're reading it carefully and do what she says. So it's not, they're, they're not really as scary as they seem when you're just looking at the details. So it's a remarkable achievement actually Mm -hmm. to have, to be, take through a knitter through those steps of those sweaters and have it come out, um, you know, with a good result at the end. So the only thing is, is that you, what you need to be careful about is that I wouldn't want to start trying to rejig stitches sizing and, and sizing and stuff like that. So pick something that's going to more or less fit your body type and without a lot of adjustments, because mm-hmm. then that's, that would be more the tricky part. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, as you may recall, if you've been watching us all along, when I did my Joe Bats arm, I needed a bit more room in the bust. I went up a needle size. The easiest way to deal with the it. The easiest way to deal with it. And Jennifer was more than happy to walk me through a whole thing about short rows, and you could try this, and I was just like, okay. The needle size works perfectly, so you can get away with a lot for little things, but I wouldn't, su- I wouldn't suggest looking at something and thinking you're going to just rewrite the pattern to to suit some changes no because like i mean like a step aside it's literally knit like in a circle with some steaks and stuff in there as well and it's like you try to figure out i mean of course it could be done but that's not how most people want to spend their knitting time yeah a bunch of calculus (laughs) and you you uh you did ramia as your first one yeah and did you find that hard no so even even that that's a pretty easy one yeah just once you got that lace pattern and it wasn't difficult. No. And it's a fairly traditional construction in some ways. Yeah. I think you knit I sideways. Think, that's all. Yeah. But like the sleeves, 
How did I do the sleeves? I, I can't even I don't. And Joe Bat's arm was not hard either. Yeah. But you excuse me, it's like it's all cable. Yeah. So the K it's not hard. Well, that one's more fiddly with the measure. Yeah, like, I don't know. I found Ramia pretty straightforward. Yeah, so it's really, uh, um, just pick one that you don't need, think you need to make a lot of adjustments to. Yeah, That's like not say. this one. No, because the, t- the stitches themselves yeah. are hard to correct if you make a mistake, yeah. right? Yeah, like, that's why I like the step-aside one. Aaron is so easy to work with. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I said that. I recommended it. I think it's funny that she said that because I just recommended it to someone who asked the same question oh, okay. privately. And mm-hmm. she did run into a little bit of difficulty with the pocket section. Um, but I think Jennifer's helping her. Oh, it's still fun. Yeah. 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 All right, so that's uh, that's that. Okay. And then, um, so Paisley, I'm knitting on Paisley, but I have to say, I think I said in the last episode that now Paisley was going to be my priority, but something else kind of... Well, it's it was that a, time of year. Yeah, it was a little bit like, oh, squirrel. Right. So um, I'll show Paisley, and I'm just going to explain where I am, because it's hard to really judge if there's been any progress <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's uh 289 stitches mm. around uh because i've just finished all of my my uh decreases so i have a bit of straight knitting to do and um, then i'll start my increases mm-hmm. for uh, past the waist so now the first milestone that i had was it was it the last episode or the episode before i think was that i had used up all the yarn that mm-hmm. i had had unravel so now that's, I'm past that. And now I'm actually to the spot where I was when I unraveled it. So now I'm actually knitting something really new. Mm. <laughs> new yarn and new, new, uh, new section of the, the, um, I, I still really like it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fun to knit because you've got the pattern where, I've said this before, where you have to pay more attention and then you get this, um, this checkerboard thing. And I'm, I'm just going to mention, because um, Andrea from Fruity Knitting is also knitting this, she's way, way ahead of me. She's got her sleeves done she's and everything. She's doing it in green. Yeah. It's stunning. Yeah, so she um, she decided to tackle the... You should watch her episode, because she explains how she tackled... She ran into the same problem as I did with the gauge on the checkerboard, and she opted to um, change her needle size hmm. to, to um, fix it. I did a whole study for three weeks on gauge and how to keep my gauge right so that I could get get the result and I made a bigger size so that's how I I did it so I'm not going to change anything um in the in the back I made the adjustments in the overall size Mm -hmm. for that so anyway so that's um that's that so should you introduce what we're wearing people are going to be wondering where these sweaters came from yes (laughs) <laughs> they magically appeared <laughs> yeah. in the mail. So we got a kind of, I guess, what is this called? Would it, would it be like a trunk show? No. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't well, know. no, it's like a sample. I don't know. We got yeah. some samples. So we got some samples from Rowan. Here, I'll put it over here. That other people knit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Yeah. We didn't have to knit it. No. We wear it. I mean, what could be what? I mean, people who would get stuff knitted for them. This is how they must feel. I know. We would have no idea. It was like Christmas morning. Yeah. In the in the <laughs> just belt. put it on. That's yeah. all there is to yeah. it. And luckily, they don't all knit something in Jennifer's size. They right. actually knit. There's some. There's some <laughs> well, stuff this there. This barely fits me. It's actually a bit small. But yeah. Anyway, so I'm. Um, so these designs are both from magazine um, sixty four. Which is the 40th, uh, it was the magazine that was um, Should be launched. Sure it looks like. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. For the 40th anniversary of Rowan. So there was every, almost everybody, if anybody's been following Rowan, they know that they launched a book for the 40th, re- a hardcover book for the 40th anniversary. And it's like a retrospective of, you know, kind of like the best of in the last 40 years. Mm-hmm. So this is not the, these uh, garments don't come out of that book. They come out of the magazine that would have, Gone. And it's called, it's Ruby. It's called Ruby because it's a Ruby anniversary, apparently, for years. Oh, there is some beautiful stuff it in is here. Oh, my gosh. absolutely stunning. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, look, who, look who's there. Arna and Carlos. Arna and Carlos yeah. are in it, too. Okay. Yeah. So this little gem is uh, Kids Hill, Kate's Hill Double. It's called Ros- Rosso. 
Here's the spread. Yeah. And it has like a little bit of cable and it's got these cute, I'm not going to stand up because the camera is, you know, whatever, but it has like a little, it's, it's uh, fitted over the, the bust and then it's got this little, little sassy flare mm-hmm. on the bottom and the buttons just come down, down here and it, it's so comfortable to wear. It's gorgeous. And did we have a customer in the store this morning that didn't believe that it was just kid silk case? Yeah, she didn't believe me. Yeah, so <laughs> it's uh, it's amazing how this feels. Yeah, because it's more um, there's more substance to it than you would think yes. with just two little strands of that little bit teeny like whiff of a yarn. Yes, and yes. so the one I'm wearing is called Marshwood. Yeah. And I have to say, you weren't there when we opened the box. No, this is the one that got the biggest. Ooh and ah, because it's so unexpected with those colors. Yeah. Like you see the, it's dark burgundy. It's alpaca classic. classic. And it's moss and dark burgundy. And then you've got the the blue and this red, which yeah. you just don't expect. And then the red with the burgundy. It's really, uh, it's really nice. There's really gorgeous things in here. So during the shop update, we'll do a little uh, slideshow from this book. Because we actually have some of these books to sell now, right? Yeah. Beautiful. And I'm, I'm, this is sweet. Yeah. I know we have to send it back, but. Oh, we do? Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> we do. Mom, pardon us. If it doesn't make it in the, za- in the box, Zach, okay. you know where yeah. it went. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but more on that book later. Yeah. Okay, so you're, what was that? That was Paisley. Yes. (laughs) So now you're on to FOs. Yeah. Can I do a little FO thing? Sure. Because this. Well, you have an FO, so of course you can do it. I finally finished it. Okay. So this is the Franken sweater, but I have a sad story about the Franken sweater. So we know the sweater is cursed, right? Because I started it for my ex-husband. The sweater curse held true. We're no longer married. (laughs) The boy, so, that's to be the boyfriend sweater. So but. then I steeped, yeah, that it was the boyfriend sweater, but then I decided to knit it for myself, and uh, I basically cut a chunk out of it, sewed it together, and then continued on making it in my own size. There's a, so whole, there's, there's a, a theme series and a thing of there. There's episodes a series about that. So then, you know, all that I had left to do, literally, for, I don't know, when did I finish this? A long time ago. A long time ago. It was still, the stitches were still being held under the armpit. <laughs> So it was sitting over here on a chair beside my living room window right. for another six months, probably. Oh, dear. Yeah. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but while it was sitting in the window. Oh. Yeah. I was, I was got, wondering what you were going to say. It got sun bleached. Oh. Yeah. So, do you have one of those projects or like outfits that every time you put it on, something gets on it? Or so I, I sewed up the armpits. I didn't even really notice. I took it out and I was like, I'm gonna do another thing, trying to get the dog hair off it, because Charlie slept on it for a year while I was right. going through my separation and didn't want to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been ruined by the sun now because I left it on the chair there for In six the months. Sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get the morning sun right yeah. over there all day. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, come on. And this is uh, this is not dyed, right? <laughs> no, this is one hundred percent lamb's wool. Natural lamb's wool fades in the sun, like yeah. all of our sheep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually the color of our black sheep by the end of the summer. Yeah. So I can dye it black. Wow, it's amazing. Eh? <laughs> That's one word for it. Yeah. But how does it does it fit and everything? Oh, it fits. It's like really heavy duty. I'm wondering if Ken wants another one. He loves it. But would he wear it with this? I don't know. But Ken's got the original one. No, I've made two of them now. Yes. <laughs> and he wear he just wore it the other day. He loves it. I know. It's really he wears it like a jacket. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. So that's that. But it would it fit? That's right on. Oh the yeah, you you took a a big amount. I don't know if it would fit him. To be honest, it's kind of slim. So what am I doing? Wearing this to the hockey rink? Like, what is this? What is this now with this faded well, you could dye thing it. on it? <sighs> Anyone have a project like this? Like, <laughs> it's an odyssey. Like, not in a good way. Mm. It's really nice. It, Ken, Ken <laughs> loves his. Okay. I mean, I guess I'll wear it anyway, but you can certainly see it's not even. Mm. Well... So it's, it was never really an FO because it still had the armpit hole in it. And now I finally sewed up the armpits and got all the dog hair off it. And now it's bleached. Okay. Somebody put a curse on that sweater. Yeah. I wonder who. 
<laughs> All right. So now we have a, a successful FO. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I really would love to be able to show pictures of it on, on, but I don't know if we've got, it hasn't been light enough to take a good picture. So no, unless a good picture happens it's, tomorrow. It's pitch dark already. Yeah. So unless it's my dog. So here's the something. Huxley. Oh, I, I forgot I have one little end left to, oh. to sew in. Oh, well, not finished. Does it fit him? Perfectly. Okay, that's good. Perfectly. So, um, and it's the perfect weight that he wanted. Too. Great. It turned out really it's nice. It's really light and soft. It's a beautiful sweater. That's yeah. a dress up sweater. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did all my seaming, which I find strangely looks satisfying. Very perfect. Yes. yes, I really like it. I think if you're the type, I like to iron mm -hmm. too. And I find it, I just find it so satisfying that you just run that iron around and then it's perfect and smooth. So if you're that type of person, you probably like sewing up. <laughs> right, maybe. Yeah. As well. Anyway, it's gorgeous. And I hope we're showing a picture of it on the recipient because right. he's very happy okay the dog is gonna have so, some grass in the corner here this is uh this is uh huxley um yeah. also by lisa richardson right yeah yeah and uh made with felted tweed in ancient it can still sell caves in drab mm -hmm. all that okay lovely all right Hannah. next fo okay Hannah's getting in so on the action. So now I have a little story because I think we talked about when we got the... Hi, hi Hannah. <laughs> yes. When we talked... Get up there. When we talked about uh, getting in the Arna and Carlos books, the 55... Um, the 55 <laughs> balls to knit, Christmas balls to knit. Um, I said that I had the original book uh, that I think I bought like 10 years ago almost. So, uh, well, yeah, it would have been 10 years ago. So I've been knitting Christmas balls for a while, some with success and some with not so much success. So the, the uh, and Arna and Carlos are doing a um, advent calendar with 24 new designs um, that you can get if you signed up to their newsletter or you can go to their shop and, and buy it now. I think it's open to the public, but if you were subscribed to the newsletter, you got a preview and so I've got some knit, but I'm not going to really show them in any detail because I don't want to spoil it's their thing. They're starting a, a whole thing on December 1st. However, I've been knitting balls a long time. So I tried with different size um, yarns and this is a, this was made out of um, a yarn that was uh, quite a bit thicker than what they're suggesting. So the, the ball ended up really big and you might be wondering what that motif <laughs> is that's on it. So in the book, they show, they give you 55 uh, patterns, but they also give you a template saying you can make your own pattern, which seems really straightforward and easy. Not so much. So that's supposed to be a sheep. Yes. And it's actually kind of like a cow camel cross. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> is you need to be, which is a big problem for me, is that you can't be too literal about what you're designing. So I want it like a fluffy sheep. But when your stitches are that big and it's pixelated, you you can't sense, make a big yeah. uh, you can't do a lot of detail. You end up with that. Right. You end up with something that's like incomprehensible. Like what is it? I don't know. It doesn't look like anything. It a looks yak, like a, a water a, buffalo. A country, perhaps like Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh. I don't know. It's kind of like a, <laughs> what is it, a Rorschach test? Or Rorschach? Rorschach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this is a couple little things that, in case you're wondering what's going on, I like to do my my Christmas balls like this. I, I do the um, crochet part for the hook out of both yarns because I just like it, kind of like candy cane -y. And then um, when I leave long tails on, on this and I take a big darning needle and I bring both tails all the way down to the bottom, through the bottom, and then I tie a little bow in them. Oh, that's cute. Or you could even make a little fringe. Yeah. So I just... Hassle. It's supposed to go inside and be hidden, but I, I like this. Plus, I find it makes it really nice and sturdy because mm -hmm. it's holding the whole thing together. And I do mm -hmm. like a little double knot. So I will do that um, with the other ones. So I've uh, so this sorry this was the this is an experiment that went a little bit wrong. Yeah, I had okay. lots of successful ones out of the book. Okay, but this was when I tried to design. Now Your you own. know why people say, "Oh, why? How come you guys don't design things?" Right. 
This is one, this is why. <laughs> That's one reason. Yeah. So okay. I'm not going to show these in detail, but right. I've got three already done three from my done ad so camp, far. advent camp calendar. So. You're doing well. I can actually do, you can do it in a night, an evening. Wow. The hardest part, honestly, is getting the, it starts with 12 stitches on four double points. And uh, they say you can use magic loop. I don't do magic loop. I don't like it. So I've done it, but I don't like it. And I thought that I might be able to use the nine inch circular needles for this, mm -hmm. but you can't, it's too small. And I'm, we're just gonna insert a little video of my full proof way that I figured out to get the stitches all oriented properly and get started on this small glue. You could use it for doing toys. What's that? What do they call it? Agri Amber, like, I don't know. Amber Amber Agri Agri whatever. Making animals. Knit it. <laughs> Knit it. So if you've got like really little tiny things that you need to do, um, this little video is going to help you. Uh, it took me a while. It was taking me almost as long to figure out to get my stitches on orange it properly and not twist it as it did to knit the whole ball oh wow well that sounds like a good one then yeah it's so, a good simple so we're trick. recording that tomorrow morning i gather yeah okay okay all right good so we'll insert that uh tutorial now sure okay here we go we're going to i'm just going to show you how to cast on a very small circumference um, item uh, using the double point needles. So I have my um, double point needles, six inch ones. So I did try this with eight inch and you can absolutely do it with eight inch, but the six are much easier to handle once you get all four needles loaded with stitches and then are knitting with the fifth needle. So I'm gonna do a long tail cast on like I normally do, but this is not a video, a tutorial on the long tail cast on, so I am gonna just do it quite quickly. Um, I'm just estimating how much I need. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to, uh, whoop, we just have to keep those from rolling. So I'm just gonna tighten up my slip knot. And I just have this, I like it with the tail at the back. And I'm gonna cast on 12 stitches all on one needle. Okay, five, six, Twelve. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I have it all on one needle. I need to join in the round and I need to do that without twisting. I'm pretty particular. I like this little, um, this kind of loopy edge to be the right side. So um, I'm going to transfer six of the stitches to another needle and I'm just gonna slip, slip them so they're oriented correctly on the needle. Two, three, four, five, six. And we're just gonna think about this for a second. We want to start with this stitch because that's actually the first stitch that we cast, it, cast on. So if we're gonna knit in the round, I'm going to orient, orient the needles so that the stitches are all at this end, ready for knitting. And you can see this is where they're joined and we're gonna join here and my um, my knitting is ready to, to join, uh, like orient it as if I was knitting, okay? So the wrong side is inside. Oh, these are really, really, that's how uneven our floor is. So I'm going to insert my needle into the first stitch of the join and I'm gonna just knit. So I'm going to knit three stitches because this pattern for the balls requires you to have three stitches divided over four needles. Okay, so that's three on the first needle. Now I'm gonna pick up another needle and I'm going to keep going. And because you've got a hold of the stitches that you're about to knit, 
your yarn, your whole um, ring of stitches doesn't start turning around, which when you have so few stitches on the needle, when that starts spinning around and the you've got a bunch of needles going at the same time, it starts to get pretty confusing really quickly. Okay, so those six stitches that I transferred are now three and three on each of their needles. So now I'm just gonna turn the work and I have, these are the next three stitches that I have to knit but I'm just going to push the work down to the end so that I'm oriented. I have my next needle ready to go. And I'm gonna knit. And even though I'm a continental knitter and I usually knit with the yarn held in my left hand, for uh, working with double points for some reason, I still you do throwing. So it's just more comfortable for me. Okay. And now I have the last three stitches to do that are up there, right, ready to go on the needle. Oh, just a little bit too close to the edge. Okay, so now this would be um, considered the uh, you have the cast on and now you've knit one round so um, when Arne and Carlos talk about this uh, they consider that two two rounds done so I'm just going to um, give you a couple other hints for knitting with double points in case you haven't done it before I find it's always easier to have the needle you're about to knit the stitches off to be on top of the uh, on top of the other needles so you'll have this, and I'm gonna just do a couple of rounds um, just so you can see how, whoop, I just wanna make sure my, sorry, it gets a little bit, this is the tail, and my yarn to knit is back here, so you just need to keep your wits about you, and I can see that all of those, uh, the orientation of the cast on stitches is the way that I want, that I'm knitting on the right side. So I'm gonna knit a couple rounds just to give it a bit more fabric, so you can um, see how it how it looks. Okay, so we'll just go fast with this. There's the next round done and already you can see that um, this is working because I'm having nice uh, knit stitches here. Okay, so we're gonna, I'll just do another round. Needles that you're working with on top. Next one, needles that you're working with on top, oh, that's the tail, I have to be careful of that when it's so, so short. Now, if you were actually doing your balls, um, Christmas balls or if you're, you're doing something else that makes a round circle your knitting would actually be getting bigger because you're doing increases at the same time but in this case it's more just the technique to get your knitting started that we're demonstrating so we're not gonna do add increases into the mix so I can tell that this is going to be the last one of the next row 
You want to watch where your tail is. Um, I'm not using a marker, uh, but you do have to realize that your first row where your tail, your cast on tail is, um, had only three stitches on it. So it's a pretty narrow little wedge at the bottom. And you just want to keep track of where that stitch is actually pulling out. And you can see it's at the end of these, these three stitches right here goes kind of a little bit to the middle, but you can tell. So now, I think you get the idea. Um, my stitches are all oriented correctly on my needles. There's no twisting. Those are all pearl stitches in there. I have only had knit stitches on the outside and for my stocking net. So I know that I've joined it correctly and my needles are, are much more stable than they would be um, starting that if I tried to cast on three stitches on four different needles at the very beginning or even if you um, start knitting because some patterns do say cast on 12 then divide into four needles and then start knitting but if you do that for the first round you can do it obviously but it's very uh, the, there's no fabric to hold the needles in place and you end up with a very floppy um, piece of uh, knitting with four needles bouncing around all over the place and it makes it really difficult. So I hope that helps. Thanks. Awesome. All well, right. if it saves that much time. Yes. Recommend it, it works to all every your friends. Time. Yeah. It works okay. every time. All right. So I'm still holding these. Well, you were going to now. Okay. Later. Later about <laughs> those colors. Okay. Everything's kind of like intertwined here. Yeah. Okay. So those were your balls. Yeah. Oh, well now we're at the shop update. Okay. okay. So the first thing we should say is that we've got all of Arna and Carlos' books back in stock. Mm -hmm. They just arrived. Oh, literally. did you get the idea? Yes. Book and, oh, okay. Yes. So I yeah. got everything that we had before. Um, make your own idea, idea book. Um, I got favorite designs. Okay. I've got more Christmas balls to knit. Okay. And the birds. The birds. Okay. We got extra birds. And uh, it seems to me that I bought something else, but I can't remember. It'll be in the... Norwegian knitting no, favorites that, or something? No, that's order. That's be that's on order, but okay. it's not released until January. Oh, so. that's the new one. Yeah. Okay, good. So we've got stock and all. Right, and you're knitting these balls out of our worsted. Yes. Okay. Our worsted. Okay. So is this the shop update now? Sure. Okay. So that show your balls. Okay. <laughs> so this is velvet bow and natural. Yeah. Okay. And so last year we we released Christmas colors. Yeah. And this year, which is red and green. Yeah. Um, and this year, we didn't have a lot of time for creativity, so red and green. Yeah. And white. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole Christmas collection. So this year, we added it in the worsted. Last year, we just had it in this McCausland spun. Uh, heritage. Heritage. Mm -hmm. Velvet bow and holly. Mm -hmm. We have it in our Selkirk worsted in velvet bow, holly, and natural. So yeah. this is in natural, too. Yeah. And then we're also making it in sock. Right. So last year we had the sock yarn, but we didn't have the worst stitch. Right. So now you can get velvet bow and holly in three different bases. Yes. Okay. And the um, the the two ply from McCausland's is a lot thicker than our Selkirk right. worsted. So I think I actually might have even used it for this. So you you it's uh, no, I don't think this so. anyway. It's kind of like an airy weight, really. Yeah. Yeah. And th but this is making a really nice. Uh, oh. Yeah. These it's are done, beautiful. I think. For sure, we're recommending the worsted for these balls. Yeah. So it's on a 3.75, and I'm using 6-inch Chiago double points to do that. So when you saw in the, the video, um, that's yeah, I, honestly... And we also sell those DPNs, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we're selling the stuffing. Yes, so that was what I wanted to say. We've okay. got 100% wool Fleece and from our stuffing. farm. Yeah or a farm from PEI, if it's not ours, right. it's probably ours, um, to stuff them. And so these, the, this size ball, um, the, it's, it takes eight grams of yarn, because I weighed it before I put the stuffing in, and eight grams of stuffing makes the... Yeah, I was trying to explain that to Rachel the other day, and I said eight ounces, and she's like, that's a one pound ball. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of tree are you going to have? <laughs> I was like, I don't think it was 16 ounces. Eight, like, eight grams. 16 grams. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So Christmas colors. Yeah. Limited time. Yeah. Only Fun. until. Get yours now. Whenever. Yeah. I mean, I don't typically make this all year round because, mm. well, I don't know, the red and this kind of red and green is like 
Yeah, it's pretty. Green. It's, it's nice though. Yeah, this it's pretty. It looks a little bit different in the Selkirk just because of the fat fiber. Yeah, but it's, so it's okay. Really so nice. that's up. Link in the show notes yeah. to the Christmas collection. Okay, those are the colors for the Marshwood. All on oh the yeah, thing. we forgot. So this yeah. is alpaca classic. Yeah, look at that. I think this one's called Vermilion, the red. That's yeah. what I was searching for. So pretty. It's gorgeous. I love these toilet paper holders. <laughs> <laughs> paper towel. Paper holder. towel holders. Yeah. <laughs> They're great for yarn donuts. Yes. Well, to display the yarn like that, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. It's your little whole project pack here. Yeah. It's okay. fantastic. So, yeah, I forgot all about that. So, we oh. have those colors. If you inside. want to knit, where is this one? That's uh, up here. Oh, okay, yeah. And then the burgundy, next to the green, it doesn't really look, uh, it looks darker, but yeah. it's the dark burgundy. It's very comfy. Yeah. Very cozy. Okay. Um, before we move on from Rowan, uh, we should say that we fell down some kind of a rabbit hole with the oh. Rowan magazine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think we've talked about before that we actually found uh, issue one. Right. And we purchased it. And then we started a collection. And um, I don't know if we talked about this in the other podcast Can't or remember. not. Anyway, we, we start, decided we wanted to collect them all. Right. Get caught up. Yeah. So we've been buying them uh, on like Etsy eBay or Etsy. Or eBay. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere we could find them. But it was pretty inconsistent and slow going. <laughs> then um, we, a friend um, gifted us some, mm-hmm. which was really, really nice. Mm-hmm. We really appreciated it. And um, so we got a lot of them. Yeah. And some really early ones as well, but we're still missing a few. Right. And then Rowan actually still has in print a lot of them, like mm-hmm. back to the 50s. Mm-hmm. Like in the... Um, Not the 1950s. No. <laughs> issue, <laughs> issue 50. So right now we're on issue 68. Right. So you can go back, I think, as far as 51. And there was only um, a couple <laughs> that I wasn't able to get. Right. So we purchased, we had to purchase them in packs of five. Okay. So out of the five, we're taking one for our collection, and then we're putting the other four on sale of the brand new ones that we have. Mm -hmm. So there's too many of them to talk about individually. So if you're you're missing some of your old Rowan issues that you missed purchasing and you have a collection, you should check with us. Jennifer will be uh, uploading them one at a time, but they're not all... They're not all in the shop yet, but we have quite a so few. So should we um, do a little slideshow of this one that we that yes. these two projects are in there? Yes. Because before we, we both do that, bought extra of this. We have this for sale. Yes. There just is a design in here that I just fell in love with a second ago. <laughs> called and I'm like, oh gosh, I want to knit all the things. It's so painful when that happens. Penny Bridge. Look at that thing. Yeah, it's cute. It's like a woven cable something. Yeah. How does that even work? It's really lovely. Lisa Richardson. Yeah. She's, she's a genius. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Look out. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. So slideshow. So, yeah. So this is another book like the 66 that um, you just want to, there's, there's, there's not a bad design in there. No. It's, and there's well, they lots of classics. They don't publish the bad No, ones. no, no. But there's not, you know, like it's still, they're still relevant. And I have to say that going through, I've been loving going through some of the really older ones. And the 80s was a tough time for classic design. Because of drop sleeves and stuff. Yeah. Not, it was just a bit weird. Yeah. Well, so, lousy sleeves on anyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, at this point. <laughs> so, um, but they, they're all... Almost, virtually all of them have designs in them that are real classics. And I, the, the one I was in magazine, like 21 or something like that, and I saw this little t-shirt that I would totally wear right now. Yeah, and there's some amazing stitch patterns, like floral yeah. motifs and things like that, that you yeah. could totally take and put yeah. on a different design if you wanted. So, yeah. I mean, They're we really... got an onslaught of them. All of a sudden, we haven't had yeah. a chance to look through hardly any of them yet. No. Um, but let's just take a closer look at this one, because we do have it for sale. We're wearing two designs out of it. We yeah. have a lot of the yarns, obviously, are still available. For yeah, these, and there's uh, a lot of um, kids it's... silk haze held double and, and stuff. this is so obviously obvious. a winter one. Yeah. Yeah. Is there <laughs> any crochet in this? Uh, I don't know. I would think that there Doesn't might be. Like does it say knitting and crochet? It really does, but... Okay. So okay, well, anyway. Okay, bye, Joe.
All right. <laughs> I love picking up and, the music for those slideshows. Yes, and we have this little, that baby from the front. This front in the shop. thing. Yes. Is, I tried it on, like, but we, I'm going to have to wear it next time. I'm too time. short to wear it, really, but. Uh, it's big. I, I might be too short to wear it, too, but I'll give it a go. Let's see if we can quickly find it. I love that one. I might not be able to, but uh, it's quite the. It's like a giant. It's for evening wear. Dressing but... gown. What? Yeah. Is it, how I don't know. wear it? I don't know. Here it is. Look at this thing. Yeah. We have that in the shop. Amazing. Like incredible, right? Yeah. I don't know if you can see because I had to turn autofocus off on the camera oh, yeah. because of the software issue. Apple. At least we don't need to say. No anything. microphone. No autofocus. This iPad is not making losing, me happy. Losing point. Yeah. <laughs> Someday we're going to get a viewer who works for Apple and I'm going to air all my... <laughs> vent all my uh, anger. Okay. Or they're going to write and explain to me how to use the thing. Uh, okay. So we got as part of the event, which was what we haven't... We, we published before the... Or we yeah. uh, put up before the event. So the event was... Awesome. Awesomely fun. Yes. It really was. We had 200 and... No, 190 people. Yeah, 190 yeah. people. Done. And uh, we were in a studio, and it was wonderful. And we do have a recorded um, a recording of it. So at some point, we'll release that as a separate episode or something so mm -hmm. that um, other people can watch the replay. Mm -hmm. uh, but everyone who was there had a great time. Yeah. The women of this lovely series of knitting Christine books that now includes three books. Yeah. Shirley Scott. Yeah, Christine and Shirley were just delightful oh my gosh there's i mean it would be enough. hard to exceed our expectations about like how amazing they were going to be but they actually did yes and it was really funny because the tech guy yeah. you might remember scott from right. the last event well so we actually uh recorded it he's got a little tiny studio and we recorded in there because we couldn't use uh red shores this time and he had some he's got people that work for him yeah. helpers and we knew that something was up. They did a like kind of a tech run at two thirty in the afternoon, with and they were Christine all still Shirley. with Christine and Shirley, and they were all still laughing when we got there. Yeah, they were six. like, "Those two are really something." Yeah, <laughs> so they're just delightful. Yeah, and the stories and like the amount of material, like they they had yeah. a story for every. It was just incredible. The Costco caper, like some yes. amazing yes. stuff. Yes. Uh, as anyone who was who was there already knows. But and, yeah, it was really fun working with them. Yes, and they they have put in so much work to gather the stories and it's like so they're really fun, but it's serious business. Yeah. Like they really preserved worked hard uh, tradition yeah. and cataloged yeah. a tradition. And there's so much folklore in here. Yeah. I mean it's more than knitting patterns. So yeah. anyway, what we've done because we had we were of course planning on having an in person event where we were able to sell their books for them and they signed like a gazillion copies for us. Yeah. Um, but we never got to see 50. any. Okay, well. <laughs> 50, 50 of each, each book. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so we, we're now selling these as a three pack. Yeah. And they're all signed. Yeah. Um, so the link to purchase a three pack, and there is a small discount on the three books if you get them in the three pack all signed. Um, it's in the show notes below. Yeah. But uh, these are obviously a keepsake. I don't know what's planned for their next uh, publication. Mm -hmm. But when we um, put up the event, however we decide to do that, if you missed it, um, you, sh you should watch it because yeah. it, ugh, it's everything right about knitting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It and everything wonderful about Newfoundland. Heart heartwarming and We're obviously and... going to Newfoundland next summer to record an episode. We have to. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. We'll be out on gross morn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freezing our nibs off. Yeah. With icebergs floating So by. the... Um, I was just going to say, oh yeah, so we, and we still have a few of the the recipe books as well. So yeah, the actually bread, sold a lot of those. Yes. Yeah. So if you also want your Newfoundland recipe book, we yeah. still have, uh, we still we have, still have about those. half of them. But yeah. we sold more of the recipe book than we did of the knitting book yeah. since we got that shipment in. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people already had some of the, right. the knitting books, but we yeah. sold a surprising number of the recipe And books. I made the cod cakes. Yes. And they were delicious. Yes. And there is an ingredient in there that I wouldn't not have thought that makes them really spectacular mm -hmm. how long does salt fish keep for forever that's the whole idea i know it is but yet they refrigerate it uh i don't know okay because i still have some left i want to make them again yeah but it's been a couple weeks now but like it's salted fish that's, well, it's that's a way of preserving it yeah right? that's right what does it say keep refrigerated i don't know so you so your house doesn't smell <laughs> i don't know <laughs> 
know. It's straight. Did you, Anyone go, knows? did you go with salt cod? Or did yeah, you it do says salt, salt cod. cod. Yeah. Well, it okay. says it could contain salt cod or haddock. Apparently, that's how it's done around here. Oh, dear. You get whatever they put in the thing. Close your ears, people from the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what the package oh, says. Oh, dear. Okay. By all means, mail me some salt cod. I thought you, I thought you, when you said that, I heard you say that before, I thought when you said that, that there, there was a choice. No, I real, it's the like, package? no, the package basically says, you don't know what's in here, but it's either cod or haddock. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. It's a white fish. Okay. Yeah. That's too bad. I guess it's because I you can't, I mean, I mean cod, cod's not plentiful enough to, to just have salt cod these days. I thought they kind of recovered, sort of, but anyway. Let's not get into that. Okay. <laughs> Let's not get political. Okay. No. <laughs> so uh, this is the worst in the mellow boat. Just getting rid of all our things. Okay. okay. Then we still have 52 weeks of socks. Yeah. We ordered a gazillion of these. Yeah. And this is an amazing gift for a knitter. Yeah. So we just want to, we know there's like a lot going on. So we're just mentioning it again because yeah. uh, usually when we get them, they go in right away. But these it ones have really hung around. Nice gift. Well, we ordered a lot. You know, I love the smell. Um, it's just a stunning, stunning book. It smells better than old socks. <laughs> and I mean, fifty-two patterns, right? Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. It's really, anything Lina does is truth. Yes. Okay. So, and then this is new. Yeah. Fair Isle Weekend. Yeah. By Mary Jane Mucklestone, and yes. people were asking for this, and we got it in weeks ago, and yeah. completely forgot to even mention it because that's how crazy it is in yeah. our world right now. Um. So pretty cute stuff in here yeah really and nice. mary jane I, there was a pattern i had of hers that i wanted to knit forever ago and i just never got around to it i had it printed out and everything mm -hmm. um but she's a great designer yeah and these are cute accessory projects do you know what yarns used in this uh a various i didn't even look to be honest because i know what yarn Jameson i would and be Smith. using yeah. yeah um nope all different yeah okay good Cute. Very nice. Also smells <laughs> the <good> delicious. <laughs> it's got the books good it, book books smell. In your, it's got the good book smell. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Is it glue? <laughs> 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 Maybe I should be worried. I think it's the paper. Yeah. It smells great. It smells amazing for a yeah. book. Okay. And then something that, oh no, we, we missed it. So right. the other thing is, is that uh, we had such a success with Marie Wallen's books. Because you can't really get them in Canada, I don't think. Not easily. Right. So now we have every single one. Except, except for Meadow. Okay. And the reason why no, we don't. We have Meadow. Nope. No. I'm thinking of Gentle. Never yeah. mind. Okay. So the only reason we don't have Meadow is because then I would have to open up another wholesale account because Jameson is um, is distributing that book. Okay. So I just didn't get around to right. doing that, and I don't know if I'm going to do it. But. Okay. So we're not going to... We didn't drag them all out here because no. they were still in the plastic, and we're trying to keep them really pristine, but we're going to yeah. do a quick slideshow of all the titles we have. The cover, Just the covers. Just the covers. This is the Marie Wallen collection that we now have here at yeah. Place in Harmony. Okay. Yeah. So I even got the little Once Upon a Time, the kids. Cute. Too. Yeah. Love it. Cute. Okay. So let's go look at that. Okay. Super fun. I'm going slideshow crazy. I, but the I have to say that when we pack up one of those boxes, when people are buying sweater quantities of Marie Wallen's designs, your heart bursts. With joy. Yes. <laughs> your heart bursts yeah. with joy. The, color, the use of color out of some kind of genius. Yeah, I think so. Because when you see those colors in a box, you just you just want to knit it. You want to write on the note, do you mind sending this back to me after you've knit it? Yeah. Because I would like, very much like to have this, but I don't want to use this many colors in yeah. anything. I, I'm going to think I'm going to try one next. Yeah. It's so, it's, there's so many colors in some of them, and it's usually like one ball. And yeah. Then there's the, 
you know, so it's really fun. Like, I don't think there's probably not a lot of waste, but no. it's just a lot of different items that it blows out our uh, postage system. It's like, that's too many different items yeah. on this, uh, for this packing <laughs> slip. You're like, oh, there's so many different colors. Yeah. In them, but uh, it's just so beautiful. Like the combinations that, that we're packing up. It's Imagine really... getting gifted that. Yeah. And then shrinking it. Oh, <laughs> I think I said that last time. Don't that's shrink. why I don't make them. It's oh. my fear. Well, you're not going to shrink it. Yeah, I've knit. shrunk a thing or two in my day. You know how to wash knitwear. Yeah. So, uh, and the mouse is still living in my bathroom, but now he's moved to behind the toilet. Okay. In case fun. you were wondering. I feel like he has a whole network going on back there, so I really need to deal with that. Yeah, I think you do. Uh, yeah, since you share a wall with me. Yes, please do. <laughs> please deal with that. Uh, that was just totally off track. Okay, okay, so what have I been up to in my spare time? So I haven't been going to archery. No. I haven't been riding my horse. No. I haven't been doing some... I, I did some knitting, but I've You're been not doing some... Anymore. I haven't... I, well, I think I'm going to start again on Tuesday evening. But yeah, my okay. exercise class that I loved got moved to 9 a.m. And I'm sorry, even without sheep chores, I'm not making it into town by 9 a.m. No. So I decided, because I do this, that this year was going to be the year. Finally, at 46 years old, I was going to make a traditional fruit cake. And of course, I have no family to make like to prepare Christmas for it because I'm a single woman but well you know but like I just sometimes think you know what screw it I can still make a fruit cake even though I'm not I'm not in like a traditional well you family. like to bake I used to like to bake now I'm fairly horrible at it really because I'm totally out of practice oh. everything doesn't turn out oh no no does no, it, nothing is that turned out. as opposed to nothing turns out or everything doesn't turn out or nothing turns out, <laughs> nothing turns out. okay except your pie crust is still my good. shortbread cookies that i made from the kate davies yeah. book turned out amazing yeah that's an amazing recipe how do you pronounce the book uh is it the book yeah book, bukali book? bukali maybe book, yeah. okay there's a there's recipes in that book yeah and the shortbread cookies that are in it are delicious. amazing. It's an amazing recipe. Yeah. I think it's her husband's. It's uh, lavender. Recipe. You, I put lavender. It calls for lavender, but you could equally put lemon or orange peel or, yeah. or do whatever kind of shortbread cookie you want to do. But the recipe itself is flawless. Yeah, delicious. And I know there's not a lot of ingredients in shortbread, so you might say, "What's the big deal? How can you screw mm -hmm. up shortbread?" But there is a difference between yeah. certain shortbread recipes, and this one yeah. is spot on. So yeah. the proportions and whatever he's worked out. Yeah, it's her husband is Tom. Um, anyway, awesome. We have that book too. Yeah, and I have the stuff to make the oat cakes, but I haven't made them yet. We haven't talked to Sam in a while. Sam misses us. Yeah. We've got so many books that we, <laughs> we haven't had to order again, thankfully. We, we can open now, open the library. And, <laughs> but uh, there's some mittens I want to make out of one of those books. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so fruit cake. So this year I decided, one year it was like peppermint bark. I that went and good. I went on this peppermint bark kick. I had to have the traditional peppermint bark. I'm going to make it myself. I ordered chocolate from, don't ever, don't even ask. Yeah. Like I had the European chocolate and the whole nine yards. And the so peppermint much. bark was worth about a thousand bucks a <laughs> tin. Anyway. <laughs> um, this year was fruitcake. So of course we made I, marshmallows one year. Marsh, homemade marshmallows. Those were fun. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Try to give them out around here. People don't get it. Like, <laughs> well, Islanders are hilarious. I'm like, here, Billy, here's a bag of mar homemade marshmallows. Put them in your hot chocolate. They're, like, cinnamon flavored. And he's like, Thanks. Thank you. That goes right up there with the chai tea. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> Same thing. Hilarious. Anyway. Yeah. It's not mind. necessarily the first thing you would think of is no. to give as a gift. No. Ginger snaps, maybe, in a little bag, whatever, <laughs> but marshmallows. I thought they were delightful. Yeah. Because I think they used to sell them at Restoration Hardware. Oh. You could buy marshmallows. Anyway, fancy marshmallows. Yeah. This year, it's fruitcake. So, of course, I enlisted Rachel because she's the most expert baker in these parts. Yeah. But it's a tall order because there's a famous fruitcake in <laughs> Belfast yes. where we live. Yeah. And it's made by a gentleman named Donald McDonald. Yeah. And as it turns out, there's two fruitcakes. He has a light and a dark yeah. version. And I've tasted the dark one. And we had a cake auction. And mm -hmm. one of his cakes sold for $220. Yeah. Was it $220 or $250? I it think was it was hot. $220 because I... <laughs> mine sold for $40. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but let me tell you, ever since that $220 sale, I've been obsessed it with was this for charity. cake. It was for a charity yeah. cake auction, of course. Yeah. So I didn't get to try it for years after that. Yeah. So we finally got to try it, what, like two year, years ago? Something like that. 
And how did you come across getting a piece? How did you get on that list? Well, because I went to visit them. <laughs> and they That's still had some. So but it's funny because it's really, he, both of his cakes are excellent. Like they're really, he's really. He's serious about it. And there's a secret method, a top secret method. And then Jennifer asked me this morning, um, did you have the light one or the dark one? And so I was going to tell you this, but I, I, I don't know, something else happened. So I didn't tell you, but he, it's the, the, they're both delicious. And I was served light but the light actually comes with an apology. Sorry, I only have the light. And the light is already heavenly. So I can't I can only imagine if you had a the whole dark one. You had the light? Yes. Oh my goodness. Well the dark one's probably made with hundred year old Armagnac or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know really what he's good. up to over there. But yeah. um there's a lot something going down on the Glashman Road with this fruit cake. Everybody knows everybody knows that um the, so the Belfast Historical Society would help hold a cake auction, um, and everybody, people save their money till Donald's cake comes up, and then it was intense. It, it was intense. Yeah, it was some intense bidding. I mean, obviously, it yeah. went over two hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. People, people know. So food. I, of course, want my fruit cake to be like that. Okay. <laughs> so I, 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 uh, I you're said, already in trouble. I, I know. I talked to Rachel. I'm like, Rachel, like it has to be like Donald's cake or I'm not spending 40 bucks on fruit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and liquor and everything else. And so she's like, good grief. Okay. Well, the pressure's on. So she starts sending out calls for help. The bat so this, <laughs> the fruit cake her cousin's uh, husband is a chef. Ask him, you know, and my uncle is the fruit cake aficionado down their way. Yeah. Ask my uncle. Yeah. And, uh, so the uncle wrote the funniest reply. He's like, well, this is what I do. And such and such and this and soak it for this long and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, so if you had a copy of this Donald McDonald's recipe, though, I wouldn't mind taking a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, of course we don't have that. If we did, we would not be asking you. <laughs> and so, and I would say right now, after this gets goes out, your chances of getting it are even are less. A slim to nothing. <laughs> Because that's it's the secret fruit cake, <laughs> and I'm like Rachel's like we're getting this recipe. I'm like unless you're willing to commit break and enter, I don't yeah. better be. Actual Probably islanders have tried, yeah, and they haven't been able to get it. So trust me, a CFA a really is not good, getting a hold a of really this good recipe. Fruit cake. Mind but, you, she is an islander, so she might. Yeah, but I don't know you're already in trouble because I'm pretty sure, unless I've imagined it in some kind of conversation, the words like three weeks to a month for soaking the fruit alone is part soaking of it. Soaking the think. fruit or wrapping the cake? I think it's soaking the fruit. Well, we're soaking ours for four days. Okay. So, so everybody, sweet. send me your favorite fruit cake recipe. Yeah. It has to be good, though, because it's good because it was moist. Yes. And delicious. Yes. So I don't know. Anyway, so then we engage. It wouldn't be, that is usually the criteria for a good cake. Moist yeah. and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but rare in a fruitcake. So then we engage with an outside operative. Oh, like nice. somebody who's an islander. But I blew blew the mission because I was kind of like trying to be all cool and kept. So, do you think uh, if you ask Donald, you might be able to get his fruitcake recipe? <laughs> and then she's like, I'm sure if you asked him, he'd give it to you. And I'm like, mm, why don't you ask him? <laughs> and then, then she got suspicious. <laughs> she was like, why? <laughs> Then she, I think, kind of started to dawn on her that this was maybe a bigger deal than she initially thought, and then she got kind of nervous. So I don't know if our outside operative is going to be able to get the, the fruitcake recipe either. But, I mean, love should be shared. <laughs> as long as my turns out, we're using a Our market. own grandmother wouldn't give us the recipes. I stuff. know. She always left an ingredient out. It's a, ironic because I, or that's a coincidence because I just came across her biscuit recipe, uh, which we finally wrangled out of her at like age 93 on yeah. my computer today when I had to fire it yeah. up. Yeah. And was there something missing? Well, I have never tried it, but yeah. her oat cakes are on there too. Yeah. I have, yes. a, I have a, an oat cake recipe that's like hers too. No, no. I have her oat cake recipe. That had something missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to try. Did we try it? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. But I have I have a recipe from Cape Breton that tastes exactly like her oat cakes. So I think I've got it. There's okay, a little. Okay, well, we'll have compare to tweet, notes. It's a tweaked version of the recipe that I got. 
and it comes out because there was something missing when I made it, so it comes out like hers. Okay, well, I'll print out the ones that I have, which I is think, a biscuit and an oat cake. Yeah, okay. I always had to watch her do it and write it down. I actually think that the biscuit recipe that is making the round around Belfast that we know of is actually a better one than Nanny's was. I, I hate to say that, but well, bless her soul. Well, the ones that have the yogurt in them? Yeah. Oh, you're not supposed to say that. It's a secret biscuit recipe. Yes, it's a secret biscuit <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't really good, but I like nannies because they're like nannies. Okay. They're different. I mean, they're more fluffy. Yeah. They're more like a buttermilk biscuit deli- kind of deal. Yeah, they're delicious. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. but instead of buttermilk, they have yogurt, I think. Yeah. Not saying how I found that out. <laughs> Can't confirm or deny that. That's the secret it's ingredient. A secret, secret yogurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyway, this fruitcake. So, I mean, we've, we've gone to Bulk Burn and basically spent our spending money for the week. Yeah. Between the two of us, it's really expensive. It makes the two fruit co- candy fruit eh? cakes. Well, it's full of uh, dried sour cherries, which don't oh, are not cheap. Okay, okay? No, and there imagine. was a golden raisin shortage. Don't even get me started. That was a whole <laughs> ordeal. So I can't believe you're actually making something with a raisin. In I know, it, but, but McDonald's had raisins in it. I know they always do. Salting, saltan. What do they call saltana? The, the golden raisins uh-huh. and the saltana ones, I yeah. think, and currants, yeah. which are a bitter, nasty fruit. Dried currants. Yeah, but the, anyway, we're soaking ours in apricot brandy. Really? I know. I'm sure Donald uses a fancy cognac. I don't. I don't. Know, I don't think but he's I had apricot hear. brandy. No. So whose idea was that? Rachel's. Okay, well, she's fast and loose with the booze when it's, it comes to baking. <laughs> she puts fireball in everything. Well, I've never tasted <laughs> anything that she made that wasn't excellent. I know. So. Never. And she tells me, I, I was like, fruit update, because it's been in the bowl for like a day and a half now, and, or is everything getting plump? She's like, I've been adding extra brandy. Okay. <laughs> Do we need to go back to the liquor store? So we're baking them tomorrow. Oh, okay. Then it sits, mm-hmm. wrapped in cheesecloth and liquor. Yeah. The point of this whole story is, send along your fruitcake stories. Yeah. And tips, if you dare. Yeah. So the one thing, you know, people always make jokes about the fruitcake that gets get given around for Christmas yeah. and that doesn't happen to Donald's. Right. So that's the fruitcake I want. Yeah. Please help me. What is the secret? Yeah. Because it was delicious. <laughs> mm-hmm. I should go visit them. Yeah. Maybe he's got some. Well, it wouldn't be ready yet. I'm sure it's still fermenting or whatever it does. Anyway. It's good. He, I feel like he's going to take pity on me and somebody will get word to him and he'll send me the recipe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying everything. <laughs> but of course, I'll always be baked and I can't afford to do another recipe no. this year. So no. hopefully, hopefully right. it works out. But we don't know what we're doing. I mean, we're just using a Martha Stewart one. And I'm, I'm, I'm weary of Martha. <laughs> really? A little bit. Well, didn't we try something else of hers that we expected to be stupendous? And mm. we've had more. We've had more luck with the Ina Garten. Yeah, because there's lots of butter. <laughs> I wonder if she makes a fruit cake. I don't know. Nigella Lawson has uh, probably a pretty good fruit cake recipe too. But the problem with her recipes are they cost literally a thousand dollars to make. Remember the <laughs> goose stuffing? Yeah, I had to buy dried pears from like Nanaimo. Yeah, BC. <laughs> It was like $64 it was to get a ship here. It wasn't local. <laughs> no, crazy, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah her stuff is It was from too. the Okanagan Valley. Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Dried pears from the Okanagan Valley yeah. to put in your goose. Yeah. That was delicious, eh? The, the potatoes. The fat that came off the goose was delicious. The goose had no meat on it. Yeah, it was all the it fat. Was, it was actually $64, the goose. Yeah. And it was an anorexic goose, just yeah. like from Babe the movie. There was skin. There was skin and skin which and is bone. all right for me and then <laughs> there was like where there was five of us or six yeah. of us and we were slicing it and we're like yeah okay well that's it that's no it was that. just about the fat that came off it though yeah goose gravy the potatoes you have not lived and yeah. the stuffing of course was delicious so yeah. we ate potatoes gravy and stuffing yeah and, and the, the goose. potatoes were uh roasted potatoes with that what was it rice flour on them yeah oh boy that's a nigella a thing yeah yeah, oh my Love gosh, I'm getting hungry. Me too, and I'm always salivating because of these braces. Okay, well, I guess that's it then. Uh, no, <laughs> oh no, we have a new feature. There was no oh, ask us anything. Okay, there was no ask us anything. No questions. No, well, I'm no asking ask about fruitcake, so I'm asking the yeah. questions this week. Yeah. And uh, we've decided that we're going to end the podcast. Oh right, 
with a moment of tranquility. Okay, good, because we all need that. Yes. Small hopped up over the great Christmas cake caper. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so we we're gonna choose um, different scenes like from around like we're just where we are. We're gonna videotape or videotape. We're gonna record. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, there's no tape At least involved. you said tape, not film. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to record um, scenes from... We've got a, a whole series of different things that we're going to show. Okay. And it's just going to be like a minute and a half or so at the end of each episode. Okay. So, um, you have to... You'll watch... Which one are we going to do? It's a surprise. It's going to be a surprise? Okay. So, okay. what are we calling this? A moment of tranquility? Yeah. Feel like we can come up with a better name. Okay. Suggestions welcome. Yes, for please, this segment. Please suggest. Okay. And before we do that, we we'll, we have to finish the business. Okay. Thumbs up if you like the video. Yes. Subscribe. Please, subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. Our subscriptions are uh, in the tank. It's like you <laughs> hate us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so subscribe and uh, click your notifications because yeah. we threw a zinger last yeah, the last time. We went out on Wednesday. We went out on Wednesday instead of Friday, and um, share. Yes, if you don't mind sharing with your knitterly friends who yeah. might enjoy our podcast, that will help us grow a lot. Yeah. Because we've really stagnated. We yeah. love you all. We're happy to have all 6,700 of you. Yeah. We'd also like to add a few more free of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. So then, uh, so that they are after the hard sell. Now right. we're going to have our moment of tranquility. All right. And we'll say goodbye until two weeks time. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So have a great two weeks, everybody. Yes. Bye. Bye.